Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today's collection review is all about insectoids, and this is certainly a trip down memory lane for me. This uh, set, or this theme I should say, came out back in 1998, lasted till 1999, and I can remember several of my friends uh, having lots of these sets and we'd play around with them. And like all collection videos, before I get into it any further, this is going to go through all the minifigures, what sets they came out in, and how much they are worth, but first, let's take a closer look at the insectoids theme in general by checking out this set. This is the Bi-Wing Blaster, one of the mid-sized sets from the theme, and the minifigures are not insectoid minifigures, but technically they're known as Zotaxians. They're actually just a general humanoid alien race that was driven off of their home planet, happened to land on an insect planet, or a planet that had lots of gigantic insect-looking creatures, and they made their spaceships look like insects as to kind of blend in for camouflage. This makes sense, because LEGO did have a lot of insect type minifigures back at around this time, so if the characters themselves were insectoids, they would look like insects. They're not. They're actually just humanoid aliens, lots of cyborgs and stuff, and the ships themselves that they operate are insectoids. The whole theme was based around uh, having these vault stones. They look like the eggs of the insectoids, but instead they sort of harvest energy. So this was this was the thing that you were collecting, and that's what powered your ships and uh, supposedly, you know, your whole civilization. Okay, so that's the basic backstory of the insectoids theme. Now let's start from the very first guys, moving our way to the end. So we're basically starting from the smaller sets first and going up to bigger. So this guy came from the Space Spider set, and this cybernetic character features quite a lot of mechanical prints that go onto the face. You can see a targeting system around the eye as well as another green targeting system on the chest piece and other notable features about this minifigure. And the ones that come out from this theme is that the gray is in the old dark gray and the molds as well as armor piece on this minifigure are unique just to this theme. I've mentioned this in previous collection videos where especially the early 2000s and late 90s, uh, some themes just do not have new versions of minifigures for sale on Bricklink, so I don't know what his price would be brand new, but used he's around three or four bucks. The next set was the Hornet Scout, and I would say these two figs included are some of my favorite from the entire theme. This is the only character that actually has a name throughout the entire theme, and that's because she appeared in the LEGO Racers video game as well. This is Gypsy Moth, and up to this point in time, the inclusion of this female minifigure made Insectoids the third theme out of all LEGO themes to actually have a female fig included. These Zotaxian aliens had so much circuitry in their body that it actually changed the color of their skin, so she's got blue circuitry as opposed to the green that we saw before, and she was included in another set, so she's not just exclusive to this one, she is around $8 brand new, and this minifigure here is by far the most common guy to appear in most of the sets actually from the entire theme, he's the droid, so he doesn't have any bit of organic material in him, at least I don't think. He's probably closer to a protocol droid, and you can just see all the crazy, wacky detailing kind of just speckled throughout the entire print on the front. I like that the general bit of printing shows a lot of the copper or bronze holographic or shiny print that goes on the legs, torso, and face, and the clear space helmet just adds an extra weird kind of mechanical touch that I really like a lot. He is a $12 figure, despite the fact that he's the most common from the entire set. I think just people really liked him. And then this next minifigure here came from the Beta Buzzer set. He's a lot closer to what we see for sort of a classic space person. You can see that he's got air tanks and the print on the face shows a certain type of breathing apparatus as well. So far, by the way, I would like to point out that there have been no repeats in terms of printing for any of the torso pieces, which is really cool. For this time during Lego sets and themes, I feel like there was not a lot of variation, but there's a decent amount going on here for the Insectoids line. And this particular minifigure also appeared in the Bi-Wing Blaster set, and what really makes him exclusive is the print for his face. He is a $6 minifigure. And then from the next set, the Cosmic Creeper, we've got another 
green circuited minifig. He's exactly the same from what we saw as the very first minifigure presented here. The only difference is now that armor piece is molded in black and not that old gray. He is about six bucks, so that's somewhat the standard price for a lot of these more common minifigs. And then from the Bug Blaster set, we get the more base spacesuit version of this cyber green skin version of the Zotaxian. He came out from the Bug Blaster set as well as the Planetary Prowler. The print for his chest has changed and it's exclusive just to him as well as the print for his face. They really did a good job differentiating the looks of a lot of these uh, minifigures from this theme. And this is one of the first themes where I really feel like LEGO was paying closer attention to making their minifigs look and feel different in most of their sets. Your guess is about as good as mine when it comes to half of the mechanical detailing you can see on this character, and he's decently common, so once again, he's around a $6 minifig. Moving up the line, the Bywing Blaster gets passed through because we already showed the exclusive figs for both of them. And that's also the same for the Sonic Stinger set as well as the Planetary Prowler, one of the cooler ones. These are all figs that did appear in smaller sets from before. And as we get into the realm of larger sets, there are a couple more minifigs that did remain exclusive. From the Celestial Stinger set, we get one of the only figs that has printing on the legs. And I gotta say, considering the fact that this minifigure dates all the way back to 1998, the printing here is super solid. This is the first time we see a print for this type of face, which is also really cool. And now the blue circuit guys also have the black version of this weird shoulder armor. So the variation of different shoulder armor and different colored minifigures is now totally balanced out. Surprising enough, uh, he did appear in one other polybag set, so he's not exclusive to this big fat one, which makes his price, you know, pretty average, around six bucks. And then Lumen up on the last and biggest of the sets from this entire theme, the arachnoid base. Don't pay attention to the fact that arachnoids are not insects, I don't know, it's just a fun name for a base that LEGO decided to choose. And there are two figs that are exclusive just to this set. This guy here is basically just a combination of pieces or prints that we've seen before on other guys. It's just a slightly different combination. But because this slightly different combination came out in the biggest and most expensive set, he's not $6, but nine brand new. Then from this set as well, it looks like a more high commander, high ranking person from this particular base. I don't know if there were any real names aside from Gypsy Moth, but this particular combination of prints for this character is a $30 minifig. Now this is the first time we've seen this torso print that is leg printing as well, which is highly detailed and a different face print, but everything here also does appear in one other poly bag minus that combination of black armor. So realistically, Bricklink kinda has the prices messed up a bit for this guy, because reasonably you could buy the pieces to make Make this figure for significantly less uh, than what it would go for uh, as a brand new version of the fig. But there you have it, this combination of parts is actually 30 bucks. And then there were four figs that came out in poly bags, exclusive in their combination to the poly bags, but no brand new prints. So like I said just before, this character came from the Mosquito poly bag in 1999. And for some reason, this character is also just really, really expensive. Uh, around $30 as well, and maybe the mosquito poly bag was also quite rare, so perhaps that torso and leg and face print just are hard to get from either this set or the other one, and that's the reason why they're so much more expensive than the rest of the figs in this collection. This next figure came from the Mega Tac poly bag. He's all the same pieces from the minifigure that came out on the Celestial Stinger, though this time he's got air tanks instead of that black armor. There's no version of him available brand new, so I'm gonna guess probably around five or six bucks considering the new version of this guy with a slightly different piece is that price. And then from the booster poly bag, it's just called a booster poly bag, we get another female insectoid fig. 
and it's the same deal she's just got air tanks instead of gray armor so i'm gonna price her around the same probably seven maybe eight dollars at max and our final insectoid is kind of interesting he's from the zoe weevil poly bag or the speed sled depending i suppose on where he was released they just changed the name but interestingly enough he's he's the exact same minifigure that came out from the arachnoid base set but he doesn't come with a armor piece or an air tank. The way he sat down in his little uh, ship, I think just didn't allow for him to have one on. Oddly enough, this rarity makes him 850 on Bricklink for some weird uh, reason. Now you can get a lot of these guys for significantly less if you wanna get them used. And that is the entire Insectoids collection. All in all, that makes for 13 unique minifigures in total. Lots of those are just slightly different combinations of unique pieces, but that's actually very good considering when this theme was released. Remember, a lot of these guys came out right before Star Wars sets started coming out for LEGO, and that's when they really upped their minifigure game. So basically, this is the best LEGO was doing for minifigures before they started getting into Star Wars, which is actually pretty good. So if you want to see more collection videos like this in the future, please let me know what theme you want us to check out. We are going to be doing updates for a lot of our older theme collection videos uh, pretty soon. So if you want to see update videos, also let me know which ones you'd like to see us do for some of our previous collection videos in the comment section below, along with the new themes that you'd like to see. All right. So if you've stuck around this long in the video, thanks a lot. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey everybody, wanted to pop in really quick, let you guys know that we've got a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some incredibly awesome Lego mocks. It's definitely worth checking out. The revenue from the web store helps support us here at the channel, as well as the designers that create these amazing Lego builds. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Remember, that's www.brickvault.toys, and uh, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.